What's up guys, in this video, I wanna give you a quick little refresher of graphing reciprocal functions. Now, typically like the day before a test, I would do a quick little review. It'd roughly be between 20 or 30 minutes. I hope in this video is not gonna be that long, but I wanna highlight some of the important things that you need to know, just in case you have a test coming up, or maybe you haven't taken math in a while and you just need a quick little refresher. So let's go ahead and tackle right into the reciprocal function. All right, so this is the reciprocal function, f of x equals one over x. Now the graph, or what we call the parent graph of that, is going to look something like this. Now we're going to have a horizontal asymptote as well as a vertical asymptote. That's important because our domain is not gonna be defined for all values. It's going to be defined to the left of zero, to the right of zero, but you can see these graphs are approaching zero, so it's not defined at zero, right? That's a lot of times where we can say x, cannot equal zero. So when I go through my examples, I'm gonna show you how to graph with the reciprocal function, but we're also going to practice graphing and identifying the domain as well as the range. Now, to graph a reciprocal function, I think the easiest thing to be able to understand is knowing what your transformations are. Okay, now this hopefully is something that you are semi-familiar with if you've been dealing with transformations of the quadratic function, the square root function, or really any other types of function. The kind of the unique thing about the reciprocal function is that this is what we call a odd function. It's symmetrical about what we call the origin. If you flip it across the y-axis, flip it across the x-axis, you're going to get the exact same graph. The reason why that's important is because we actually don't have a b, or the a and the b are kind of technically like the same thing. Because you can always have a b like inside of there, but you can always factor it out and therefore it'd be like one over a, would be the kind of like exact same thing. So this a, when it's negative, you can think about that as a reflection about the x-axis, or you can think about that as a reflection about the y-axis. That's the kind of uniqueness about this being an odd function. Now, to remember our c and our d, well, what I always tell my students is, let's just go back to what you remember. Okay, now here are two things. Now with this quadratic, uh, I use the H and the K because a lot of times we deal with the vertex. But the important thing that I want you to recognize is it doesn't really matter what the letters are. What really the important thing that you need to understand is where are those letters? Notice that the H and the C are what we call inside of the function. This is inside the quantity that's being squared because this is the quadratic function. Here we have this X minus C is under the square root, right? So that's inside the function. And the exact same thing you can see over here, the X minus C is in the denominator, right? it's inside of the function. And so the important thing, if it's x minus h, if x minus c, x minus c, they all provide the exact same thing. That is going to be your horizontal shift left or right. And remember, you can always think about this as like x minus parentheses c or parentheses h, because whatever that value is, if you think about it like x minus five, you're gonna shift five units to the right because c is actually equal to five. Right? And if it was like an x plus one, you would shift one unit to the left. Notice the d. The d and the k are all outside of the function, right? If the c is inside, that's shifting left to right. The d is outside, that's going to be our shift up or down. And again, if that's like plus five, you're gonna go up five. If that's going to be minus one, you're gonna go down one. It doesn't matter if it's for the reciprocal function, the square root function, the quadratic function, or any other type of function. And just remember your A is also outside, so that is going to be your vertical stretch and compression, right? That's going to be, oh, as well as your reflection, reflecting about the X axis. But again, the unique thing here is you could put a B inside of there, but since this is actually what we call an even function, we don't really typically uh, talk about it that much. But over here, we obviously have a B, because you can reflect that about the y-axis. But again, remember, ladies and gentlemen, if you take this graph and you reflect it about the y-axis, that's the exact same thing as reflecting it about the x-axis. So that's why we only need this one A in that case. But don't worry, we're gonna deal with when we have a number down in the denominator as well as a number in front. So that's the basic premise and the idea of dealing with the reciprocal function. Now it's gonna get to some examples so you kind of have a good idea of how we're going to apply everything. Okay, so here's our first example. And whenever you have the reciprocal function, what I tell my students to be able to do is rewrite it into the form that we talked about, right? That a times one over x minus c plus d. So in this case, you can see I have this two here, but or a negative two, but I can actually rewrite that out in front. So y equals a negative two, one over x minus three. And again, there's no D in this case. But you see, if you were to multiply that back through, you'd multiply the negative two times the one. The reason why this is important is because we recognize here this is our A, right? And so therefore, we're gonna have that reflection about our X axis. As well, you could think about this as a vertically stretch of two. Now, when dealing with graphing, or at least in my classroom, unless we were using something with graphing technology or we're using like a table of values, I wouldn't really be so concerned about having that vertical stretch, you know, represented in points. You can always plug in a value in for X and find your exact 
exact value. But for this video, for this quick little review, I just wanna go over the basic idea of what this graph is going to look like, and therefore then we can go and graph it. So how do we go ahead and graph it? Now, remember we have this parent graph, right? And what I always like to kind of understand, there's a couple things that happened. We took our parent graph that looks something like this, and we're going to be shifting it three units to the right, because again, it's X minus C. So you could say C is a positive three, right? So therefore we're gonna be shifting it three units to the right. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my vertical asymptote and I'm gonna shift it three units to the right. Actually, let's just go and do that over here. So one, two, three. All right, now, since I did not shift the graph up or down at all, my horizontal asymptote is remaining the same. Now, the other thing in terms of the orientation of this graph, you can see this graph is being reflected about this x-axis, so therefore that's gonna go here, and that's gonna go up here, and then also it's kinda of being like vertically stretched too. So again, just to give you a rough estimate of what that graph would look like, it would look something like there. Now again, remember, I talked about at the beginning, I want to be able to identify the domain and the range. So the domain is a set of all x values that make up this graph. Now remember, for our parent graph, the domain was true for all real numbers except for zero, because that's where my vertical asymptote was. Now, my vertical asymptote has shifted over to three. So my domain is gonna be from negative infinity to three, union three to infinity. The range has not changed, right? I did not shift the graph up or down. It's defined for all values except for zero. So that's gonna be from negative infinity to zero, union zero to infinity. Now, let's go and take a look at the next example. All right, so the next example, we have y equals one over x plus four plus two. So one thing I always like to always have is again, putting this into that format that we can recognize. And a lot of times when students see the x minus c, you know, they when they see something x plus four, they're like, well, how do I rewrite it into with the minus, right? Well, remember, you can always rewrite this as an x minus a negative four. Wouldn't you guys agree that x minus a negative four is the exact same thing as x plus four? Yes, but now it's in that form of x minus c. And we can also I identify that my c is at a negative four. So instead of my vertical asymptote being at zero, now it's gonna be shifted four units to the left. Then we have this d at the end, right? It's outside of the function. So again, that's going to be shifting my graph up two units to the right. But again, to, to visualize that, what we're gonna to want to shift is going to be our horizontal asymptote. So now you can see I have my horizontal asymptote, I have my vertical asymptote. I'm not reflecting the graph at all, right? There's no negatives. So you can see this shape or this orientation of the graph is going to remain the same. So it's gonna look something like this and like that. Now let's go ahead and identify the domain and the range. So the domain is gonna be the set of all x values except where there's that vertical asymptote, which occurs at negative four. So this will be from negative infinity to negative four, union negative four to infinity. The range is gonna be the set of all y values except for where it's undefined, which in this case is going to be at that horizontal asymptote because it's approaching the horizontal asymptote, it actually is never crossing, and that occurs at two. So we have negative infinity to two, union two to infinity. Okay, now in this example can confuse students because again, it doesn't look like anything like we had for our reciprocal function. But again, let's just go through the process that we did. Let's rearrange this. Let's have our reciprocal function first. Recognize this is a positive five. So therefore, I'm gonna rewrite this as a plus five. So it'd be one over negative one third x plus a five. And then again, I don't really want my a or my b in this case to be in this denominator. I can rewrite that as a scalar in front. So if you're thinking about what would you need to multiply to get this three in the denominator, that would technically just be a negative one third. Okay, so now what I want you to see is, yeah, if you were to multiply that back through, you'd exactly get the negative one over three X. It doesn't really matter where the negative is, guys. It could be in the top, it could be in the bottom, it could be out in front. Remember, the reflection about the X axis is the same as a reflection about the Y axis. So in this case though, rather than thinking now we have a vertical stretch of one third, it actually can be thought about like as a vertical compression of one third. So that would change the orientation of that graph. But again, I'm not gonna be so concerned about that. Now, what we will also recognize here is I have a plus five. So that's gonna be shifting my horizontal asymptote up five units. So I have the parent function in my head, kind of memorized in my head, and hopefully you do too. If not, you can always go back and rewind to kind of refresh yourself on what that graph looks like. But I have one, two, three, four, five, so that's going to be my horizontal asymptote. I'm not shifting the graph left or right at all, so therefore my vertical asymptote has remained the same, but I do have that reflection, right? So instead of my graph being in the first and the third quadrant, it's now gonna be in the fourth as well as the second quadrant. But it's going to look something like that. It's gonna be a little bit closer to your asymptotes and 
that would be a good representation. Now let's go and take a look at the domain and range. The domain is going to be all real numbers except for zero because my vertical asymptote didn't change. So that's going to be negative infinity to zero, union zero to infinity. And then my range is going to be the set of all y values except for where I have my horizontal asymptote, which occurs at five, right? Because we shifted it up five units. So that's going to be negative infinity to five, union five to infinity. All right, now this last example, a lot of students might look at this and be like, wait a minute, I thought we were doing reciprocal functions. Yeah, but remember, ladies and gentlemen, when you have the degree is the same in the numerator and in the denominator, we can go ahead and rewrite this as linear. We can actually rewrite this as a reciprocal function. Well, how do we do that? Well, again, remember guys, a rational expression in this example is just a division problem, right? So I can say x minus four divides into three x minus two, how many times? So hopefully with a quick little review of using long division, we can see what our quotient is going to be. And their quotient is going to be this exact same expression rewritten in reciprocal form. So x divides into 3x. We always take our first term, divide it into the first term of our dividend. x divides into 3x three times. Then you multiply back by your divisor. 3 times x is a 3x. 3 times negative 4 is going to be negative 12. Now again, subtract both rows, make sure you distribute that. So 3x minus 3x is a zero. 3x minus a negative 12x is going to be a positive 10. Now x divide, does not divide into 10, so that is going to be what we call our remainder. And we always put our remainder over our divisor. So now, ladies and gentlemen, you can see I have y equals a 3 plus a 10 over x minus 4. But just like we did over here, we don't really want to look at it like this. We want to look at it like this. y equals a 10 over x minus 4 plus three, okay? So now, again, we recognize we have this 10, which we could factor out to recognize that would be a big vertical stretch here of, of 10. And we're also shifting the graph four units to right and then three units up. So to do this one rather quickly, I can go one, two, three, four. That's going to be my new vertical asymptote. One, two, three, that's going to be my new horizontal asymptote. And then my graph is going to be vertically stretch, right? So again, just identifying, doing this, as you do more examples of these, you can see how things get a lot quicker. And my domain is gonna be all real numbers, except for four, so negative infinity to four, union four to infinity. And then my range is going to be from negative infinity to three, union comma, three comma infinity, right? There you go. Okay, so that was all of the reciprocal function. And if you have a good idea of this, but you recognize this as a rational function, then don't worry, because in the next video, what I want to do is do a quick little review of how to graph the rational function. That's all coming up next.